security. Yes. With Fantastic. Blue spider okay. webs. Take it away. Thank you so very much. So I understand I have about 25 minutes. Um, and I'm here to talk about improving open source software security. Um, I can't actually see the questions right uh, while I'm presenting. So why don't we hold questions to the end and uh, I'll go. So I'll give my presentation and I'm going to try to leave a little time for questions. Does that seem fair enough? Uh, yeah, the, the, the plan, the, so people who are participating are invited to enter their questions in the shared notes session rather than in, inter interrupt you so that you can then address them uh, at, at your convenience at the end. So yes, yep. go ahead. Perfect. Okay. All right, so as the title side says, I'm at the Linux Foundation. My title says I'm the Director of Open Source Supply Chain Security. So I hopefully don't need to do much of a pitch here about the value of open source software, but I think it's useful to show some numbers about how critical open source software is today. Um, Synopsis did a study finding that about 98% of both general code bases and Android apps contained open source software. Um, there's variations depending on your data sources, but more recent data suggests that anywhere between 70 to 90 percent of software, once you open it up, look inside, is in fact open source software, even if, say, the application itself isn't. Um, and the use of open source software components is increasing. Um, only back in 2016, um, Synopsis found an average of 84 open source components. By 2020, it had risen to 528. And of course, we know how averages work. <clears throat> That's just the average. That means that many are more. But of course, when you once you have a lot of software, unfortunately, the attackers come. Um, and you know, this is not an open source unique problem. All software is under attack uh, directly via its vulnerabilities in you know, production and operation but also through its supply chains. Attackers are attacking the way that software is developed and distributed, uh, built and distributed. And so these are just some images of, of some of the uh, examples of, of important well-known vulnerabilities, you know, heart bleed and shell shock, uh, the solar winds, uh, the attack on the solar winds build system. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a real thing. Um, and, it's, I think it's sometimes helpful to step back and, and look at how software is developed to answer the question, well, how is software attacked? Um, and in particular, I wanna talk a little bit about the um, um, building and packaging of software because um, attackers are increasingly not just attacking the software where it's deployed, but they're going back and, and attacking how it's built, how it's packaged um, because <clears throat> if they can slip in there, they gain control over you know, all the deployments, for example. Now, here's the sad truth. There is no silver bullet. There's no one thing you can do to eliminate all security problems, both in deployment, uh, you know, ba basically all the way through. Uh, the reality is that you really need different kinds of countermeasures for different issues. And you know, some people have commented about you know the things I'm going to show you about some of the things that OpenSSF and other folks are doing, saying, well, why are, are do you have all these different things going on? And the answer is because there are many different kinds of attacks, and so we need to counter them, and you need different measures to do different to counter different kinds of attacks. So one organization that I particularly want to focus on today is a group called the Open Source Security Foundation. Uh, that's a foundation within the Linux Foundation. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, the Linux Foundation uh, is essentially a foundation that creates foundations, um, create foundations for a number of different um, <coughs> tasks. Uh, but this particular foundation is particularly focused on improving security of open source software. Uh, its tagline, in fact, for the open source software, uh, open source security foundation is securing the open source ecosystem. Um, and it's a little bit of a challenge to get your hand over all the different things that the open source, so open source security foundation is doing. Uh, so here, let me just show you a quick org chart uh, that kind of gives you a lay of the land. Like most Linux foundation foundations, there's a governing board, you know, it decides where money goes. Um, then there's a technical advisory council. 
Uh, these do go by different names within the Linux Foundation, but they oversee the technical decisions. Um, most of the work within the Open Source Security Foundation happens within working groups. Um, there are six working groups right now. There's a seventh one in formation uh, that I think is going to become a seventh working group. Um, but And they basically focus on different areas. The best practices working group understandably focuses on uh, developing best practices, promulgating best practices. Um, <clears throat> Vulnerability disclosures, how do you uh, disclose vulnerabilities, fix them quickly. Uh, identifying security threats is probably the strangest named group. Uh, they focus on you know, metrics and how do we identify um, software that's more or less uh, secure. Um, security tooling, improving tools. Supply chain integrity, how do we make sure that the uh, that, that supply chain diagram that I just showed you is kept uh, integral. and uh, securing critical projects, identifying what's the most critical projects so that we can focus resources on them. <clears throat> now, I'm going to show you uh, basically those two overlaid. Uh, basically, that simple how does how forget developed through source repositories built, packaged. Um, and there's a huge number of different projects that the OpenSSF does. I've got little color codings in the bottom. Um, but <clears throat> fundamentally, the Open Source Software Foundation has a large number of different projects, all focused on different parts of, uh, of these processes. I'm going to talk about a couple of them. I'm, I could, but I'm not going to try to discuss them all. But what I want to really show with this picture is that, in fact, there's a number of different projects, each of them focused on different aspects. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to at least briefly talk about a few others, but I do want to make it clear that not all security work, even just within the Linux Foundation, is within the OpenSSF. Uh, there's a large number of other related um, uh, projects that are doing really interesting things and um, you know are uh, do doing important things for security. Uh, goodness gracious, there's a long list. I, I'm just looking at here things like Let's Encrypt, uh, currently the world's largest certificate authority. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a lot of other things that are going on. I just don't have time to talk about today. All right. <clears throat> so I, I am often asked, hey, I'm, an, I'm a developer. I develop open source software. What in the world do I need to do? Um, so let me make a quick pitch on a couple specific projects, and then I'm going to talk about um, some of them. Uh, what, you know, what should I do? What could I do? Well, first of all, um, most software developers are not told how to develop secure software. So please take a course. Um, we have a free course uh, on how to develop secure software. There's the link right there. It costs you nothing to take, nothing to get a certificate um, if you use uh, the LF training platform. It's also available on uh, the edX platform. Um, if you're an open source software project, try to get an OpenSSF best practices badge. There's a link right there. Um, use a lot of tools to find vulnerabilities through your, um, your through your CI pipeline. There's a lot of different tools. None of them are perfect. None of them guarantee to find all the problems. Almost all of them will, will have what's called false positives. They'll find something, but in your particular context, it's not a serious problem. That said, it's really important to have tools in, to, in your CI pipeline because it's not possible to depend only on manual processes at today's scale. Um, monitor for the known vulnerabilities in the components you depend on. Most software is, in fact, other people's software components that you're reusing. And so since that's where most of the functionality is, you need to monitor those and to rapidly update. And of course, that means you need to make sure you're prepared to rapidly update when there's a vulnerability found in them. You know, use packagers, managers, use automated tests. Um, evaluate before you even select your dependencies um, and make it easy for your users to up update. And of course, continuously improve. The attackers are always getting better. So I mentioned earlier that course, um, <clears throat> you know, you, you, it's basically a set of three courses. Uh, it's free. It's not a huge time commitment. It's design. It's uh, split into three parts: uh, requirements, design, and reuse. And and 
A lot of courses that talk about developing secure software don't talk about reuse, which I think is unfortunate because that's key today. Uh, of course, implementing the software, verifying other more specialized topics take you about approximately 16 hours, 14 to 18 hours uh, to go through, and you can go out. It's all completely online. You can go through it on your own pace. Um, and it teaches the fundamentals, things like the design principles, how to use accept lists to constrain your inputs, uh, the most common kinds of vulnerabilities and how to prevent them, uh, how to harden things. Um, and uh, the whole, in fact, the text is also available under an open license, the uh, CC BY license. Uh, and this is actually a project within the Open SSF, specifically the Best Practices Working Group. So there's a URL. We'd be delighted for everybody to take those that course. Um, next up, um, I mentioned earlier the Open SSF Best Practices Badge. What is that? Well, it's a um, system for identifying best practices for open source software projects. Uh, the goal overall is to um, encourage projects to take steps to increase the likelihood of better quality in general and security specifically. Um, so things like you've got to use HTTPS, you've got to have an automated test suite, you've got to use at least one static code analysis tool. Um, you know, publish how you people can report vulnerabilities to you because even if you take good steps, mistakes can happen. So you need to make it easy for people to report a vulnerability. If an open source software meets uh, best practices criteria according to um, certain rules, it earns a badge. There's actually three le badge levels, uh, passing silver and gold. We'd certainly like people to get the other, the higher levels, the silver or, or even gold, but even getting passing um, is important. Um, and it's, prim it's a combination of self-certification and automated checks. Um, you can think of it as a form you look at, you answer some questions, we try to automatically fill those in where we can. Uh, and those answers are posted publicly so people can uh, check them out for themselves. Uh, there's thousands of participating projects um, and you can see the current statistics at that URL there. Uh, and again, uh, see that URL there to uh, go get yourself a badge. Um, one of the more recent activities in the Open Source Software Foundation I'm sorry, the Open Source Security Foundation, I keep making that mistake, sorry about that, um, is uh, something called the Alpha Omega Project. And this has gotten a lot of interest because this is, I think, this is something new and I think very, very interesting. Um, it's funded by uh, a few large organizations. Uh, well, I, I can lay name specifically, this is actually funding from Google and Microsoft, although you know, certainly more is, is of interest. Uh, and it's got two parts. Alpha and Omega. On the Alpha side, it, the goal is to uh, identify a few of the most critical open source projects and then go interact with them directly, work with those maintainers. What are your needs? Uh, help, and then help that specific project identify, fix security vulnerabilities and work at improving their overall security posture to make future vulnerabilities less likely. Uh, on the Omega side is focused more on a much larger set, say the top, I'm going to get approximate number 10,000 projects and focusing much more on applying automated security analysis, but then um, having people look at those tool reports, figuring out what's real and working with those communities to get them fixed. Um, we're actually hiring. So if you're interested in working uh, full-time on improving the security of open source software projects, uh, come talk to us, uh, go to that URL, okay? Um, uh, so now how can, you, how can you help? If you're interested in this Alpha Omega project, um, you know, two of the things you can do, frankly, would be working with the OpenSSF uh, Securing Critical Projects Working Group, because that group's trying to identify the most critical open source projects which then feeds into this. And of course, the best practices working group is working to identify and improve best practices, which we hope to then help important projects apply. Uh, and you can go to that URL uh, about Alpha Omega to learn more. Let me talk briefly about a couple other projects that I think are really interesting. 
Uh, one is SIGSTOR. Um, the technology to do signing and uh, to do cryptographic signing or digital signing and verification of those signatures has been around for decades. But here's the problem. Just because it exists doesn't mean it's practical for use. A lot of people have tried to do cryptographic signing and have found that it's signing and particularly it's verification is too hard to apply in a practical sense. So a vast amount of open source software is not signed. And that's a potential problem. Um, and so SIGSTOR is a new, pro relatively new project with the idea of making cryptographic signing and verification of those signatures much, much easier. It takes a very different approach to it. The idea is that it makes it easy for people to sign code and then verify them. In particular, uh, it uses a transparency log to make it transparent what's been signed. And then it also enables monitoring of activity uh, to monitor those uh, signatures. Second, uh, supply chain levels for software artifacts, SALSA. Um, this is a, um, a basically, a, if you like, it's a spec of various good activities to increase the integrity of the build and distribution processes to counter attacks on, uh, on those processes. Um, it's got four levels, anywhere from basic protection all the way up to maximum protection. The idea is that you know, we want people to apply different practices that will counter a huge number of attacks there. Now, if you're a user of open source software, remember I showed earlier a list of, hey, you know, how do you develop open source software? Well, frankly, if you're considering the use of open source software, say, bringing it in as a dependency, um, there's things you can do, and the simplest and most obvious one is look for evidence that the developers are working to make it secure. You know, looking for badges, looking for security tools, uh, you know, looking for documentation on why it's secure. Look at its docs, by the way. Is it easy to use securely? If you have to do a lot of configuration to make it secure, and by default it's insecure, that's probably a dangerous component to use. Is it maintained? Does it have significant use? Now, I have to be careful here. Just because a big company uses a component does not mean it's the right component for you. Uh, I always worry about fads in the world of software. You know, they use it, so I should use it. No, not necessarily. However, if there are no users, that probably means there are no refusers, reviewers, and that makes it a higher risk. That doesn't make it useless, but it does mean you may need to check it more carefully. What's the license? Um, if it's important, what's your own evaluation? And did you acquire it, download it securely? In particular, one of the most common kinds of attacks on open source software is something called typo spotting, creating a project with almost the right name. So before you bring in a project, double check its name. Take you 10 seconds to just double check that you type the name incorrectly, and yet that can eliminate uh, one of the most common kinds of attacks. So uh, let me try to close up here by saying, basically, if you're interested in improving open source software security, uh, get involved. Um, there's a lot of different projects and foundations. I've mentioned in particular the Open Source Software Foundation, which has a lot of projects within it. There's a number of other um, projects. Um, SPDX is uh, an international standard for software bill of materials that helps people you know what is in the software that they're using or thinking about using. I've already mentioned SIGSTOR. There's many, many other uh, projects, foundations, all involved in improving open source software security. By all means, if you're interested in any of these, get involved. Um, if you're interested in, a, in improving the security of a particular project, get involved in that particular project, help it improve its security. Um, the world is made by the people who show up. And so please, I encourage you, if you have any interest, show up, just learn what's going on, uh, get involved. Uh, I think you'll be glad you, you did and the world will be a better place for it. So thank you very much. I'm gonna stop there.